So um, I want to try doing a couple of questions that are about how to answer specific types of question. And this type of question is something that's come up um, in exams uh, a few times before, and it's usually the same sorts of mistakes that students make. So I want you to try and uh, avoid making those mistakes. And hopefully if a question like this comes up in the exam, then you'll be able to get all the marks for it. So if we read the question through first and then I'll tell you some of the reasons that people fall down usually. So a 600 gram ball is dropped from a height of 3.2 metres. What is its speed just before it hits the ground? So the first thing that I would always get you to do is to think about what values are we actually given in the question. And we're told that it's a 600 gram ball. So the first thing that I would do is I would write what this means. And this is 600 grams is mass, except that we don't do mass in grams. We do mass in kilograms. So you need to convert this. So 600 grams in kilograms is 0 0.6 kilograms. So even before moving on, I would think to myself, we don't use grams, we use kilograms. Let's do the conversion so that I don't forget. It then tells me that it is a height of 3.2 metres. So straight away, I already know that that's a height. And actually, that's a bit of a clue uh, for what we're about, about to do. And then it says, what is its speed just before it hits the ground? Now, um, the, the most common mistake with this sort of question is that people say, oh, it's asked me to calculate speed. I know that the equation for speed is speed equals distance divided by time. I've got something in metres, so that's a distance, but I haven't got a time. I don't know how to answer this question. And actually, whilst you are calculating speed, you need to think about other um, words that mean a similar thing to speed, and that is velocity. And it's actually the velocity that we want to be looking at, because that's what we want to find in one of our equations. And like I said before, this word height is important because when we're talking about height, there is one equation that we really need to think about. But first of all, we're going to write down what we've got because that's really good practice for calculation technique. So we've got a mass of 0 0.6 kilograms and we've got a height of 3.2 meters. And then it's asked me for a speed or for a velocity. So I'm just gonna write velocity equals question mark. That keeps us a bit focused about what we need to do. If you think about the equations that you've used, there is one equation that links mass and height. And that is the equation for gravitational potential energy. So you might have seen it as GPE. I'm gonna write it as E with a little p like that. And the equation for gravitational potential energy is mass, times small g times height. And mass times small g is the weight of an object. And we should know that we can do that by 0 0.6, which is our mass, times g, which at GCSE we say is 10, and the height, which is 3.2. So if we work this out, so 0 0.6 times 10 times 3.2, we get an answer of 19.2 joules because it is potential energy. Next, the assumption that we need to make is that all of the potential energy is going to be converted when it's dropped. So it's going to have this potential energy at a height of 3.2 meters. It's then going to drop. And you should know that whenever anything is dropped, we have potential energy being converted into kinetic energy. So this is the assumption we are going to make. So with our list here, we could add that the potential energy, because we've calculated it, is 19.2 joules. We can then assume that therefore its kinetic energy, by the time it gets to the bottom of its fall, is also 19.2 joules, because all of this potential energy will have been converted into kinetic energy. And then we can think about, well actually, I know that the equation for kinetic energy does contain velocity. So we can write that out, that our kinetic energy is a half times mass times velocity squared. And this is how we can calculate our velocity. Now you could rearrange this algebraically to start off with, or um, you can substitute in the values and then solve for V. So we're going we're gonna to do that because it tends to be a little bit easier. So we, if we put down our values that we know directly below the equation, our kinetic energy is 19.2. 
and then we've got a half times our mass of 0 0.6 times v squared. And I'm actually going to try and bunch these two up. So we're going to consider half times 0 0.6 a bit of a block. So we want to get v squared by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide both sides by a half times 0 0.6. So we'll end up with 19.2 over a half times 0 0.6. If you've been shown a little bit of a different method um, for rearranging the kinetic energy equation to find V, then, then do whatever you find is easiest. But uh, it's just trying to, to keep the algebra simple for, for some people. So 19.2 over uh, a half times 0 0.6 will equal V squared. Okay, you need to make sure that you've got your brackets in here. So if we do this on the calculator, we've still got 19.2. So we're going to do divided by 0 0.5 times 0 0.6. And this is going to give us 64. Now we're almost there, but we need to remember that 64 is actually V squared. So therefore, we need to do the square root of 64 will give us V. And this will be 8. So oh, I know that, but you know. The square root of 64 is 8, so therefore that's 8 metres per second that this ball will be travelling at just before it hits the ground.